Hello, my name's Jade and today I'm going to be going over my anticipated releases, the books I want to read and my reading goals for 2024. We'll start with anticipated releases and then we'll go into the books I want to read this year and then we'll wrap up with my reading goals. All will be timestamped in case you want to watch one over the other. So anticipated releases, I'm only gonna do the ones that I'm actually like really excited about. I do have a much longer list than this, you know what, I'll put it up on screen here. So these are like all the releases that like I have an eye on, that I'll just like keep updating throughout the year. But today I'll be discussing the ones that like I'm like are actually my most anticipated releases. It's not clickbait. So two of them have already come out because I always film this video late, but I'll mention them just, you know, because they were anticipated releases, they're still highly anticipated by me and I haven't finished either of them yet. The first is All the Violet Tiaras, Querying the Greek Myths by Jean Mingus. This is part of the 404 Inkling series and I've been wanting to read one of these for a really really long time and then when I found out Jean was writing one and I'm- this is like- could not be more up my alley if it tried. I love the Greek myths and I love Greek mythology and ancient history and I also love looking to queer stuff. So look at how gorgeous this cover is. It was it was just the perfect introduction to the 404 Inklings for me. Really looking forward to reading it and I definitely hope that I'll then read more of these. Um, I'll leave a link to 404 Inklings down below if you wanted to find out more about them. They publish um, like little books about very niche topics, little non-fiction books. So other examples are Love That Journey From Me, The Queer Revolution of Shit's Creek, They Came to Slay, The Queer Culture of D&D, The Loki Variation, The Man, The Myth, The Mischief. All of those are queer. <laughs> they're not all necessarily queer. I think they're just recommending them to me because of this, obviously. I have loads of other ones as well that sound really interesting, so I'll link them below if you're interested. This came out January 25th. And the next up we have one of the most anticipated books for me. I feel like so many of my really anticipated books usually come out at the very beginning of the year and then I'll have like maybe one towards the end of the year. There's like, this is a very beginning of the year heavy list. Spoiler alert. Coming out January 30th was House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. I think any Sarah J Maas fan like this was like hugely anticipated. I think it'd been a couple years since Sky of Breath. I'm actually a little bit further in than this. I was listening to it this morning but I'm over halfway and I'm really enjoying it so far and I am actually filming a reading vlog so there will be a reading vlog up on my channel at some point if you are interested. When it's up I will link it down below. Okay and on to the books that haven't actually come out yet. Well actually this next one it's not out for me but by the time this video is up it might be out for you and that is What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. This is the sequel to What Moves the Dead which I read last year and I was by no means like blown away by it but I did really enjoy it. I really loved the tone and the writing style. The characters were really charming. It's a Fall of the House of Usher retelling so it's like horror but it's got like some fantasy elements. I mean if you've read Fall of the House of Usher you'll probably know. It's, it's different though. Um, it, it feels a little more fleshed out but I just found the characters so charming that like I want to spend more time with them so I'm really excited for this one actually um, and I'll hopefully get to it relatively soon after it comes out. They're also I think no veil so they're really short. I listen to the audiobook on Everand if you have Everand. And then next up we have another one of my most anticipated releases of the year and that is Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland. This one comes out on March 21st. And Lucy Holland wrote Sister Song. Again I think I read Sister Song last year. I read it in like springtime I believe. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the fact that this comes out in spring as well. Spring to me screams like fairy tales and folk tales and like British like mythology and that's like exactly what this is. I am now realizing that I know the synopses for very little of these because I'm the kind of person that like I'm the same with movies I don't need to know the full synopsis I, like give me a couple tidbits and that's enough so in sister song like one of the elements is we have like these ballads and these like songs in these stories in song form and one of them was a little bit more elaborate and I feel like this new book has something to do with that story well, the US cover looks really different. <laughs> story of Hurler and the Wild Hunt into a rich feminist fantasy in the stunning tale of two great wars, a war one land, and an ancient magic that is slowly awakening. So it takes place in 60 CE and it's kind of Saxon Queen time. I that's all I need to know. It's like ancient magic systems. The writing was really good in Sister Song. I really loved the vibes and I've been trying to find a book that has the same vibes and nothing's compared to it. So I'm really hoping this like satiates that for me. 
Next up, we have a Greek myth retelling, and that is Medea by Rosie Hewlett. This comes out March 21st as well. Look at that. Again, I, t I haven't looked at the synopsis for this. It's about Medea, and that's all I need to know. Medea and Clytemnestra, I'm always drawn to those two in particular, those two Greek myth characters. I'm not actually going to say what Medea is most well known for, in case you don't know and you want to go into it without knowing Medea was involved in myths such as um, Jason and the Argonauts, Jason and the Golden Fleece. She's also got her own story. I feel like it's Euripides that's the most famous version of Medea. I feel like Seneca also wrote one though and that's the one that I read first. I only read at least one version of Medea. I really enjoyed it. It's just such an interesting story and I think right, reading about from her perspective trying to like understand what she does is going to be fascinating. So I'm looking forward to this one. Next up, another kind of continuation of a series we'll say, and that is A Mindful of Murder by Derek Landy. This is the first book in a new trilogy in the Scott Dogger Pleasant series, phase three. So we've had phase one, we've had phase two, and now we're on to phase three. And I cannot believe it. I'm just so glad that we're still going with Scott Dogger. I read the first series as a kid, like when I was 12. Let's be honest, I never finished the series. And then a few years ago, I went back and we read them all and like read the entirety of phase two. Whole shelf is Scott Dogger Pleasant. And I have at least one video dedicated to Scott Dogger Pleasant on my channel. I'll link that down below if you're curious. It's about Skull and Detective. This series gets bigger because it's a fantasy series and there's like so much magic and all these bad guys and like backstory and blah 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 blah. It like really blows up and I think this one's like going back to its roots and we're like solving mysteries and crime which is kind of how the series started. So I'm really looking forward to it. Next one is, I again, probably won't be a surprise, it's The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I'm particularly interested in this one though. I've read most of these books, the only two I haven't is Hellbent and is it the Wonder Woman one she did for DC? But I read like all of Grisha um, and Ninth House. But this one sounds very different, it's like a historical fantasy and it takes place during the Spanish Inquisition. And again, that's all I know. <laughs> if you're here for synopsis, this, this really isn't the place for you. Historical fantasy set in the Spanish Golden Age in a shabby house on a shabby street in a new capital of Madrid, Lucia Cotado uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion. When her scheming mistress discovers the lump of a servant cowering in the kitchen is actually hiding a talent for little miracles, she demands Lucia use those gifts to better the family's social position. This isn't going to end well. That's all I want to know. That's what I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> this one comes out on April 11th. Next up, we have Something is Killing the Children, Volume 7. And I believe this is the last volume of Something is Killing the Children. This is a graphic novel series in which there are monsters that kill children and these monster hunters that try and stop the monsters from killing children but it's a really intricate system. First three all kind of follow one story. Volume four is like a backstory interlude that I loved um, and then I believe volume five, six and seven follow like a new kind of story. I've read volume five, I've yet to read volume six so I'm gonna marathon six and seven when it comes out and finish this series and I'm looking forward to it. Next up is another one of my absolute most anticipated releases of the year and that is Better By Far by Hazel Hayes. This one comes out April 23rd. Hazel Hayes wrote Out of Love, which I read in 2022, I believe, and adored. It's like been non-stop playing in my mind ever since I've read it. It's been haunting me and I've been so looking forward to whatever she wrote next because I knew she was writing something. She's also slash was also a YouTuber. She's not very active on her channel, I will admit. I do know a little bit of this one of this one actually because I watched her announcement video. So in this one we're following two characters who have broken up but they live together and the lease on their house is almost up and so they decide for the remainder of the lease until they like both find their own places they're just gonna keep living in the house but one week on one week off so one week one person will have the house and the other one will go somewhere else and then they'll swap and vice versa and i'm assuming things get complicated <laughs> out of love is also about a breakup and it was just so well written i cannot wait i just can't wait for her next book and then next up on may 7th we have lore olympus volume 6 this one is quite anticipated as well because of the way volume 5 ended it ended on something of a cliffhanger i've read it over christmas and ever since then i've just been lusting after volume 6 it can like may when is it seventh cannot come soon enough or olympus is a graphic novel series that's a retelling of hades and persephone but it's very cute the tone is very different and it um, ironically explores like healthy relationships and stuff quite a lot and like mental health 
and like finding yourself and doing what feels right those are all really big themes it's really cute i really am enjoying this series and then on may 14th we have a few on may 14th but the first of which is when among crows by veronica roth this is a sci-fi novella by veronica roth who you may know from the divergent trilogy way back in the day i've only ever read the divergent trilogy and arch conspirator which is a sci-fi novella that's a retelling of antigone I read that last year and I adored it. I flew through it. I thought it was so incredibly well written. Such an interesting retelling. To be honest, just any whatever she put out next, I knew it would be on my radar. And the fact that's a sci-fi novella, I really love. <laughs> I love the cover for it. I don't know what it's about. I'm sorry. And then also on May 14th, we have another graphic novel, Young Hag and the Witch's Quest by Isabel Greenberg. Isabel Greenberg wrote slash illustrated uh, The 100 Nights of Hero, which is my, my absolute favourite graphic novels, but alongside that. There's the Encyclopedia of Early Earth, and those two are like part of a companion series, I suppose. And she also did Glass Houses, which is telling the Brontes when they were younger and kids, and their kind of make-believe world and bringing it to life. And it was so interesting, and I love her art, so I love how fun it is. I love how much heart and sincerity she brings to her graphic novels. Anything she ever writes will always be really anticipated to me. Again, <laughs> I don't know what it's about. The last May 14th release... Um, is The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. I didn't know we were getting this one until I like started looking it up. I like went down a rabbit hole because we get a short story by them on Valentine's Day, February 14th, as part of like a collection. And I know we are getting one later down the list that's part of like another kind of series situation. I didn't know we were just getting like a, a tried and true Christina Lauren this year though. I thought like that would be enough <laughs> for them. But we're getting one, we're getting The Paradise Problem. What is this about? Oh, it's a fake dating. Okay. <laughs> We're following Anna and Liam, and it seems like they used to be together. Liam um, is part of a family that owns this big conglomerate like grocery chain. When his grandfather dies, he won't get his inheritance until he's happily married for five years for some stupid reason. While Anna is living from paycheck to paycheck as like a starving artist, and so I think like they fake date to try and like get this inheritance but they have to be happily married for five years that seems like intense it sounds ridiculous and i'm here for it on may 23rd we have hera by jennifer saint i can't remember when exactly i found out that this was the next book jennifer saint was writing but i remember being excited i loved hera as a kid like she was my favorite god slash goddess and i still kind of because of that have like a bit of a fondness for her character although none of the gods are good uh per se <laughs> but i think hera is in a really interesting position i think that's why i always just so fascinated by her and still am because she's the wife of zeus who's all powerful but zeus does whatever she wants so that position like it, it doesn't hold nothing she is still queen of the gods and she still probably holds power of the others and zeus kind of if he respects anyone opinion maybe it's Hera, but more so it's like he's just trying to please her so she gets off his back but he still ultimately does whatever he wants he still ultimately owns complete power over her so it's a really interesting dynamic she has in amongst the other gods so i I don't know like what this will be about, if it'll be like an origin story, if like we'll just be following her life, kind of like Cersei by Madame Miller, but I'm really intrigued by it. And then on June 25th, we have another Christian Lauren. This is the one that I knew was coming out this year and it's Tangled Up. It's a Tangled slash Rapunzel retelling and it's part of a series of other like uh, either Disney or fairy tale retellings by rom-com authors. The only reason this is written on my radar is because it's Christina Lauren. Need I say more? And then the last two entries both come out on October 3rd and they are a collections collections of short stories in like the Pan Macmillan editions. These ones. It's very apt that I'm holding up this one because this is Greek Myths, Gods and Goddesses by Jean Mingus, who I've already mentioned in this video. Um, and the two that are coming out are also by Jean Mingus, which is a big part of why they're on my radar. I just want to support every Everything she does I love her one of them is witches wizards and sorcerers myths and legends um, and the other one is dragons wyverns and serpents both of those are topics that would be on my radar anyway I'm very interested in witches and dragons so it that is perfect it's perfect <laughs> that is everything on my list that I want to talk to you about like what are the books that I want to read this year I kind of like the mashed potato books to use a books unbound 
term if your books abound at listener. As a podcast if you don't know, I will link it in the description. But these are the books that you like you really want to read but you keep putting off for one reason or another. Some of these were kind of on my last last year and then some of them are new. So we'll start off with two that came out last year and I really wanted to get to last year and then I never actually ended up getting to them so I'm pretty confident that I will read both of those these this year. Where even are they? Oh they're at the bottom of the stack. Of course they are. First one is The Temple of Fortunia by Elodie Harper. This is the last book in the Wolf Den trilogy. I adored, loved both of the two books that came before this. It's a trilogy that takes place in ancient Pompeii. We follow Amara who is enslaved. She works in a brothel. It's about her relationship with her owner and other people that are enslaved there and trying to like figure out how to get herself out of this situation and better herself. The second book, it was very different to the first book but it was just as good and so I was so looking forward to this third book. The first two came out in like the springtime, they normally came out in and around Jennifer Saint's releases. And then this one came out in September. Over the summer I really go ham with Greek myth retellings and I think I just like, I was done. I needed a shift. I wanted my cozier, my mysteries, my fantasies. I wasn't in the mood to read this. I will definitely, definitely get to it this year. It's like, yeah, this is one of the books I'm most excited to get to this year. I'm so like nervous and excited and as more time goes on I'm getting more nervous and excited about it. The other one actually has a very similar theme going and that is Divine Might, Goddesses in Greek Myth by Natalie Haynes. This is like a kind of companion sequel to Pandora's Jar. Both of these are non-fiction though but they have very similar situations going on. Pandora's Jar is one of my absolute favourite non-fiction books and it's also just one of my favourite books. And in that one we take 10 female characters from Greek myth and we look into their origin, their story, we see how they've been represented through art throughout time. So I think this is the same premise just with goddesses. I don't think there's 10 in here. We only have 8 this time. But that's okay. I got the uh, indie edition with this Beatles braid edges. And like I said, both the Temple of Fortune and this one were both like some of my most anticipated releases of last year and I just never got around to them. It's a very similar reason. Like I was just burned out with Greek myth stuff by the time this one came out. And the other two are books that I kind of hoped I'd get. One of them I definitely wanted to read last year and I didn't and I'm kind of disappointed in myself for doing that. And then the other one I kind of hoped I'd get to last year and then didn't, but I definitely want to get to it this year. So the book that was on the list of books I really wanted to read last year and then I never got around to is The Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. This is the third book in the Dune um, series. Up until this point, I've been reading like one Dune book per year. And then last year was the first year I didn't do that. I mean, it's only book three, so I've only done it two years. I missed a year. Part of me is now really hoping that I read book four as well this year. I'm not necessarily going to put it on this list, but if I did, if I did catch up, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> the big reason why I didn't um, read this one is because I knew I wanted this deluxe edition, which is just, they're so stunning, but they're really not cheap. And I couldn't bring myself to buy it. I ended up getting it as a gift for Christmas. And the book that I was kind of hoping I'd get to last year and I didn't, um, but it's not actually that big a deal, is Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. I did read The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell last year and I adored it. I owned this for much longer than I owned <laughs> The Marriage Portrait. I got this one the year it came out and I've still yet to read it. I know it's about like Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, and it got so much hype it was the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction that year. It was the Waterstones Book of the Year. Everyone adored it. And I adored Marriage Portrait, so I can only assume I'm going to at least enjoy this one as well. It's been sitting on my shelf for long enough. I want to get to it this year. And then I have some series stuff I want to read this year. The first one is to reread and be up to date with Monstrous. This was a goal I had for last year and again. I didn't do it. <laughs> That's okay. We'll do it this year instead. I've read up to volume five on Bronches. I believe there's eight out. So I'm three behind and inevitably one will come out at the end of this year. So by the end of the year, to reread the first five and then read six through, hopefully, I imagine nine will come out this year. So nine. Just be up to date with it. By the end of the year. The next series goal is pretty similar and that's I want to finish the, I don't even know what the series is called, but the Atlas 6 trilogy. I own both the Atlas Paradox and the Atlas Complex. The Atlas Complex actually came out at the very beginning of this year. Um, I was really hoping to reread the Atlas 6 and then read this one last year. That was kind of like a loose goal I had and again I never got round to it. I'd still like to reread the Atlas 6 but the bigger priority is to finish the trilogy, to read the Atlas Paradox and the Atlas Complex. So hopefully 
in my 2024 favorites slash wrap up video I'll be talking about how I did in fact read these two. My last series goal is a big one. It's one that I really hope, I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. And that is to read The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. The films are like my favorite films. Um, but I've never read the books and I've always been so intimidated by them. And for a long time, so it was like a purposeful decision not to read them. And then I decided, you know what? I'm a big, strong, independent woman. I can figure this out. I can do it. It's a sham for me to say these are my favorite films and I've never read the books and I'm such a fantasy book lover. I want to read this trilogy slash, I mean, I know technically it's one book, but I have it as a trilogy. I got this box set for Christmas and I'm really excited about it. And now that I like own them, I think I'm definitely going to do it. I plan on listening to the audiobooks, which Andy Circus narrates. I listened to The Hobbit last year. I was hoping to get to these last year. It's kind of like a soft goal since I read The Hobbit last year. Now that I've read The Hobbit and now that I own the books, I think I'm definitely gonna get around to them. There's so many fantasy series I want to start. I think this is a good place to like start ticking them off. And so with that, we're on to my 2024 reading goals. The first one is kind of a bit looser though, and that is be less strict with my reading. I really fell into a habit I, the last two years, but last year in particular, having like a set schedule of when I should read, how much I should read during that time, when I need to finish books by like not necessarily a really strict TBR but kind of like I definitely had like a list of books I knew I really wanted to get to per month and I just it's not that it even became a chore I didn't mind it I was happily doing that but I felt like I was using reading as a, an excuse to not do other things so my word for 2024 actually is flow it's kind of perfect I just want to go with the flow a little bit more. I want to read when I'm in the mood to read. I mean, still, I want to like prioritize new releases so that they're not sitting on my shelves for ages. But other than that, I just kind of want, want to read what I want to read. I feel like I kind of did that somewhat in January. I definitely read less in January than I normally would. Like, there was a lot of shorter books I read in January that like boosted the number up. Another more kind of general thing, which is kind of relates to something I talked about earlier, I want to be caught up on all the graphic novel series that I'm like dedicated to by the end of the year. I say dedicated to because there's some that I'm technically like in the middle of but they might be DNFs and I've not fully decided yet and that's okay we're going with the flow. The series that I'm like I'm hardcore I want to keep up to date with I want to be up to date with them so Monstrous is a great example. Laura Olympus, Saga are currently like going out and they're not like big missions where they're all out and I have to catch up with them. I want to try and keep up to date with them. I like nerdy didn't do this last year and it like ended up kind of stressing me out. Then we have some like more specific goals. So I want to read at least one Emma Hodonohue book and at least one Miriam Toast book and at least one Shakespeare. These are all authors. <laughs> It's such a, like an interesting collection of books. I feel like Miriam Toes and Emma Donahue go very well together. I feel like if you like one of those, you should check out the other one. You might like them. And then we just have Shakespeare because it's Shakespeare. But these are all authors that like I want to read all of their work. Emma Donahue and Shakespeare is that's a big undertaking. I don't think it's as big an undertaking for Miriam Toes, but I read my first two Miriam Toes books last year and I adored both of them. And so I wanted to read another one and I just never got around to it. To make sure this is something I'm actively doing Emma Donoghue I'm not so mad at. A I know it's a huge undertaking and B like I don't want to be in a position where I like read them all and then I'm like well there's nothing left. <laughs> More so Emma Donoghue is on this list because I already own two <laughs> so I want to read at least one of these. And then Shakespeare because again I want to read most of Shakespeare's work and I feel like if I don't set myself the goal to read at least one I won't do it and I do own a couple. I own Anthony and Cleopatra and Twelfth Night. So preferably one of those, that'd be great. I feel like I might, Anthony and Cleopatra, I'm actually really intrigued by. I feel like it might be that one. And then kind of in a similar vein, one of my goals for last year was to read three to five classics because I noticed I wasn't reading as many classics. And classics are one of those things that are like on your bucket list. You want to read to them someday, but they never feel like a high priority because you know you have the rest of your life. But at the same time, it feels like a weight on my mind, the amount that I want to read, but then I'm like, never reading them so I want to read like one or two again I'm not that stressed about it like I, I don't care about reading a, a high number or anything I just want to make sure I read at least one that I am still actively going through those books that I want to read but keep putting off and then the last goal again is very reminiscent of 
the goals I had for last year and failed at. Last year I had a list of sequels that I owned and had not read and of four of them I only read one. <sighs> I have a goal that I want to either read or unhaul at least two of those sequels. Now one of them is The Atlas Paradox. Technically you could just say well we'll just take the other two sequels that I own because I already want to read The Atlas Paradox and like decide that I'm either going to read one of them or unhaul one of them but that feels less of a goal than reading or unholding two of three. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna read or unhold two of three um, and that really puts the pressure on to read the Atlas Complex because if not, I'm gonna have to unhold two. Think smarter, not harder, my friends. <laughs> One of those sequels is The Eye in the Door by Pat Parker. It's the second book in the Regeneration trilogy. I read the first book in 2021, so it's been a while. The second one is The Ask and the Answer and this is the second book in the Chaos Walking trilogy by Patrick Ness. I read the first book, I want to say like 2020, 2021. I enjoyed both the first books in these trilogies that I've not continued and I had every intention to continue, hence why I own both of them. I just never felt the desire to, the urge to. I feel like if I'm closer to one or the other, I've got a friend who really loves the Regeneration trilogy and I like, I've read two Pat Bark books, I've read Regeneration, I've read The Science of the Girls. And I like have a lot of respect for that one, I feel like I'm closer to reading The Eye on the Door, but the way the first book in the Chaos Walking trilogy leaves off, I am curious, but I just, I also, I don't think I care enough. I have a big feeling I'm going to end up DNFing that trilogy because I just, I don't care. Yeah, those are my goals. There's quite a lot of them, but I think it, I think that's doable. I think they're very practical. I think they're good, solid goals. So fingers crossed, I don't fail quite as much as I did last year. <laughs> come the end of 2024. I would love to know what your most anticipated releases of 2024, what the books you want to read this year, what are your reading goals, please let me know in the comments section. That is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, slash night. My name's Sheet, I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye! <laughs>